Hi, James here. We're going to have a look at how to make particles using the motion blur and animate. With the motion blur and animate, it has a new feature where you can use particles with it. And to get to the motion blur, you just add it via an effect. And you can use it like a normal motion blur, but you can use the mask to add to a particles layer and you can add your actual drawing becomes the particle. So the first thing we need is a drawing is going to be our snowflake. You can do rain, you could do multiple things. This is really suited to weather elements. It's probably more suited to heavy rain, but you could easily make it to use normal objects like arrows or any sort of thing that you want to have a whole particle system. So to draw this, I'm going to add Snowflake to our library and we'll add a couple of colours to it. First one will be the outline. Second one will be the snow. For our outline, we want a very pale blue. And the snow can just be basically white. So, I'm going to just draw a circle in the centre of the screen. Fairly small. We'll zoom in on it so that we can make it look a little bit more interesting. Use the contour editor. I'm just going to add a point in between every point. Doesn't really matter where because I'm going to drag these points out. And then what I'm going to do is go and drag them in and we'll create a somewhat interesting shape for a snowflake. I mean, I'm sure you guys can come up with much better things than this, but this is our snowflake in 30 seconds. So that we have something interesting to look at as a particle. And we just need to fill it. And there we go, we have a snowflake. Next, we're going to need some dots. And these dots are going to represent all of the snowflakes on the screen. The different dots, like the different sizes of them, will represent... I'm just going to lock a snowflake layer so that I don't play with it. But these dots are going to represent a snowflake. And the larger the dot is, the more intense the snowflake is going to be. It's key to realise that it's not related to size, it's related to the intensity because the larger the dot the way the particle systems work with the motion blur is if the dot is very small it only puts a very light layer of your drawing on but if the dot is strong then it puts on a many more layers and you'll see this effect when you see the different sizes so I'm just going to draw some different sized dots throughout the scene And we'll add a couple of smaller ones. You might notice I'm not being perfectly round. It's because I'm using a mouse and I'd rather just get some drawn. It's not going to have an overall large effect on this demonstration that they're not perfect. Okay, let's just move these more to the center and we're ready to go. So you drag a snowflake onto your motion blur and your dots will go onto the mask layer and to see your effect you need to go into OpenGL mode. Let's zoom out. And you can barely see them, they're very faint. And this is because of the intensity. So if I put the intensity up, so say 7, you can see them much stronger. Now this intensity you can put up above 10. So you could go like 50 and get that sort of effect. 
but we're going to sort of, I think, stick with 12 or something. Yeah. But you can see that the snowflakes are all overlapping and too large. Sorry about that, I just had a phone call. So anyway, we want to make these particles much smaller. So to do that, I'm going to lock the dots and we're going to grab the snowflake and we'll just put the size down. The reason you need a snowflake in the middle of the scene is when it's working out where to place them, it works it out relative to the centre of the screen. So now you can see that they're much smaller. Now the next thing you can do, which is kind of neat, is you can animate these. So I'm going to ex extend the exposure to the end of the scene. And I'll lock the snowflake, unlock the dots. And what I want to do is I'm going to pull them outside so that I can actually see them. So I lock my snowflake. Ah, there we go. And I'm going to use the animate transform here to move our dots across the screen. Oh, these are our particles. I actually call them particles from now on. So make sure your animate button is on. You're using the animate transform and you can just quickly animate it down the screen. Simple as that. Now you drag it back onto your mask. You'll be able to see that your particles are just going down. Well, I'm just going to break this video up here and I'll talk a little bit more about particles in the next video.